What's up guys and welcome to another tutorial. This one is the Sweet Profile from 3DK Studio, which is really awesome and I want to show you how to use it. So the installation is very simple, very straightforward. Once you've done that, make sure you get your own icon, which brings up this menu over here. Okay, top left hand corner is telling you the actual catalog that you are looking and viewing in. This drop down arrow will allow you to scroll through all of the catalogs that you have. So for example, if you've got more than one, you can add that catalog by simply clicking here, which will add a directory. Or what you can do is you can simply find the file that you have purchased. For example, the Sweet Profile Shapes 002. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag this file right into my 3D Max interface. And once that's done, I can click the OK button. And then you'll see immediately that it was automatically added right over there. Now, if you want to create your own catalog, you can definitely do that. All you need to do is click the plus button, locate the folder that you have. For example, I created one just simply called custom, click in the OK button, and then it will pop up with any profiles that you have inside there. The minus button will remove that catalog. So as you can see, I just took away the custom folder that I added. Next is the display favorites. So if you can see that little star right over there on each icon, if I click each one and I activate that star, they are becoming my favorites. What you can then do is only view the favorites by clicking this button. So as I click on that, it'll obviously hide everything except my favorites. Now this is really handy if you've got quite a lot of catalogs or you've just got a lot in one catalog. So for example, under volume two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click I'm gonna hold in the control button and just randomly click a few. With those highlighted, I can now click this button. So I'm gonna add all of those to my favorites. You can also click on one, hold in shift, and then it will select the ones from start to finish. I can add all of those to my favorites. Now I've got favorites between two of these collections and it's great because the display favorites will show all of my favorites regardless how many catalogs it's split between. Next is the thumbnail viewer, which I can obviously increase and decrease. And what's really great, it's actually telling you the size of the actual molding, which is great. This button here will allow you to change the viewing method from organizing them via name, width, height, and aspect ratio, which is always handy. Okay, once we understand this, what we can do is grab one of our profiles and add it to one of the objects. Now you've got two ways of doing that. Making sure that you've got your spline selected. I can click the assign button, but making sure that you've selected the one that you want. So for example, let's select this guy over there. I can click the assign button, which will obviously add it to there. You'll see that it's added a sweep modifier, which we can delete. If you want, you can just simply double click the one you want and it'll do that, which is really handy. And what's also great about this is that you don't have to delete the sweep modifier every time you want to change it. All you need to do is just double click, double click, double click, which as always is really, really great. So let's go to the zoomed in version and have a look at the parameters we have. The first one is the section interpolation. Now, if you look here at this curve over there, that is the section. So you can see that I'm adding or removing. The next one is the path. Now, it is great to use this if you want it to be a perfect circle. So if I reduce this, you'll be able to see that it is slowly going to become more jagged and less of a perfect circle. So remember to play around with the path if you want it, obviously, in a perfect circle. Next is the smooth section and smooth path. You can see this is going to control basically the smoother groups for us, which is always handy. Pivot alignment will change where it is pivoting from. And remember, that's all got to do with the actual pivot point. You can mirror the molding. And then we can actually play around with the size, which is really awesome. So I've got a straight line here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on the profile that I want. And if you want to change the size of it, really, really handy. All you need to do is change the length or the width. For example, let's put this at 150 and press enter. You'll see that it's scaled it uniformly, which is perfect. You want to have the length and the width both go at the same. If for any odd reason yours is not doing that, make sure you either lock or unlock this button here. If it is unlocked, the length will only be adjusted. So let's actually put this at, let's say at 50, press enter. And then you can see only the length was adjusted, which kind of just distorts everything. So you definitely want that to be locked. 
And then finally we have the add to library button, which is really handy. So if you have your very own molding that you want to add and create your very own library, it's really, really simple. Grabbing the spline right over there, I'm going to click add to library. And as I do that, it immediately takes me into a view where I can actually mirror the spline if I wanted to. And if I'm happy with it, all I need to do is simply click render. Now what's really great about it, it's already got the sizes. So I can immediately see the size of this actual molding. And when I click render, it is going to create a render for me of this actual molding. And then it's going to place it for me right over there which is incredible. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one.